Stephen Knight is one of Australia's most prolific and respected light painters, and he's based right here in Brisbane. Light painting is an art form you may not have seen. It's a form of photography where artworks are created using light instead of paint. This year for the Brisbane Channel, I'm planning to feature more people who are doing interesting and creative things here in Brizzy. And I was excited to meet Stephen and film the master at work, even if it meant braving the north side. I did get a little lost on the way. Maybe somewhere here. Somewhere around here. That's us here. So, anyway, it's down there. I decided to film without extra light so you could get a feel for the conditions light painters work in. We met in the car park of an undisclosed location, and I'd invited <laughs> Flying Beard Man along to help me get some extra footage. Hey, but how it was are you? just too dark. Good to meet you. <laughs> Hi David. Hi there, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, David's going to be How helping going? film a bit of... Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. I'll just pop my headlamp on so we can see what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, then we'll, we'll head down across this grass and then yep. down into the, the culverts where I do my light yep. painting. Great. We headed to a tunnel that runs under the street and Stephen started setting up to shoot. Okay, so I'm going to set up my tripod here so that the camera's shooting this way and then I'm going to be doing my light painting slightly further down this way. I was really looking forward to seeing how he created his artworks. First I need to set up the tripod. So light painting photography is the intentional addition of light into a long exposure photo. Uh, so for that the camera has to keep still. So light painting photographers always have to use tripods. So how did you end up uh, doing this? Like what, how did it all start? Um, I've been doing photography for about 20 years now um, and light painting photography for nearly 10 years. Um, I saw some photos taken by some other light painters um, who were actually based in Brisbane and that sort of inspired me to, to start doing light painting photography um, and then I was just quite really by seeing other light painting uh, photographers and their work that's inspired me to to expand the type of light painting that I do. Shooting at night where it's subtropical like Brisbane is, you really need insect repellent. Yeah, the mosquitoes are a bit wild at the moment. Yeah, they're a bit of a pain at the moment. Cool, thanks for that. Oh. That's okay. Thank you. But Stephen actually had a good tip for dealing with the mozzies. I've got this uh, device I've been using for the last few months, which is a, a Firmacell. Um, and I just sort of placed this near to the tripod. Um, and it's actually stopped me, I haven't had a single mozzie bite since I've been using oh, it. Oh, cool. So because we're in this tunnel, I'm just trying to get perfect symmetry. So I just have to line the camera up with where I know is the, the middle of the tunnel. and then just set everything up in camera. So I know we've got that symmetry and everything's nice and straight. So with light painting photography, we have to manually focus um, because when we're doing light painting, it's in pitch black. So there's nothing for the camera to focus on. So I imagine you have quite a range of tools in your bag. <laughs> yeah, j just a few tools. Um, I'll go through some of them later um, setting up here most one of the most important ones here is the glow in the dark pebble and this is my ground reference point when i'm doing a light painting so i just need to charge up the glow in the darkness uh, by putting it near the headlamp and then this place it where i'm going to do the light painting um, and that means that when i'm creating something like a light plant i always have the same ground reference point Getting the centre of the tunnel. 
so now I'll set up um, the torches and the light painting tools. So I use uh, light painting tools from a couple of different manufacturers. The ones I'm using tonight are from a Spanish company called Light Painting Paradise, um, a American company called Ants on a Melon, um, and also a, a British company called Light Painting Accessories, uh, which um, sort of makes some good connectors between different light painting systems. Are the lights that you use, like, are they expensive or...? Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> You can light paint on a budget, um, so it's possible to get a, a, like a torch that's probably about $30, mm -hmm. and then maybe something like a T8 tube, which is a type of tube um, that used to be used to cover fluorescent lights. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get those at sort of pretty low price. So you could light paint for, you know, maybe only maybe about $60. You can yep. even make homemade tools. Yep. So you could actually, um, you can get some plumbing accessories from Bunnings, again, get a fairly cheap torch, connect that maybe to uh, like, a, a, like a bottle that you might have coke in or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, probably a Sprite one that's green is, is probably a good one. Um, and then, yeah, you can essentially light paint for hardly spending any money. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, more dedicated light painting tools are quite expensive. I think <laughs> these are about 200 uh, Australian dollars each. Wow. <laughs> So you must have spent a bit on this <laughs> over the years. Um, yeah, thankfully, um, I'm an ambassador for a couple of companies yeah. um, and I also review lights for light painting. So I tend to get most of these um, for free. Nice. Uh, but I do, <laughs> I do have to pay for some things, unfortunately. Yeah. Do you, like, do you sell the works that you produce? Or? Um, I, I do have a Redbubble store, but it doesn't really sell too much, so I'm thinking about other options for, for selling my photos. Yeah. It's, it's a nice surprise when I do get a sale, but mm -hmm. I probably need to concentrate a little bit more on there. Really, this is a, just a hobby for me, yeah. um, so it's, it's just what I like doing, um, mm -hmm. usually one night a week. Yep. So I'm not really trying to make any money out of it. Mm -hmm. um, I do reviews on my website and then affiliate linking from that, mm -hmm. so that's sort of able to fund my hobby yeah um but doesn't doesn't reach a taxable status for <laughs> needing to set up a company so i'm just selecting the um the color mode i'm going to use this so i'm going to do a, a rainbow effect tonight mm -hmm. and in terms of the designs like do you just have it in your head what you're going to do or is it is it kind of uh, how how much do you know what you're going to get when you start out and how much is just kind of quite often i will draw out designs before i actually create them yeah. i've got quite a few different light shapes that i quite often go back to so some yeah. of my light paintings have a very similar design yeah. but i do quite often draw them out on paper mm -hmm. um, i do try and make a concerted effort to try and do new light painting designs mm -hmm. but sometimes they're just hit and miss Sometimes I can do something almost randomly and it, mm. it just looks great. And then other times I can make 10 attempts trying to recreate what I've done on paper and it just doesn't work. Right. So for tonight, do you have kind of a, a fairly clear idea of what you're going to do or? Is yeah, it really more? tonight I'm going to, um, the light shape I'm going to do is a sort of five point light shape that is sort of one of my signature light shapes, yep. um, mainly because it's, it's just fairly easy to do, <laughs> fairly easy to reproduce. Play it safe. Yeah. <laughs> so do you have like a, an all-time favorite design or, or photograph that you've made? Actually, one of my favorites was one of my first light paintings. Right. Uh, and that was actually done with a homemade light bar where mm -hmm. I, I got a, an LED strip from Bunnings, soldered it to a battery pack. Yeah. Um, attached it to just, just a wooden strip. Mm -hmm. And then I went around a, a park in Roma Street Parklands at night and sort of like going down a slide with it, somehow managed to not break my leg. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's still, today, it, it's one of my favorite light painting photos. Right. Um, probably by the fact I didn't end up in hospital by the end of it. <laughs> Have you had any injuries like doing this? Uh, nothing major, no, <laughs> no. I, um, I fell down a flight of steps in a castle in the UK once, um, 
so I was lighting this up at night. Mm -hmm. Forgot that there was a, a short set of steps mm -hmm. uh, just inside the castle. I thought it was level yeah. and, and fell down that. And there's, there's 12 other photographers <laughs> there. And I sort of just shouted, I'm OK, and <laughs> just carried on with the light painting. <laughs> OK, I'm going to get ready to light paint now. So mm -hmm. I'm going to set the camera exposure. So remote is very important for light painting, um, so you can start and finish the exposure. Because um, if you press the shutter button, then the camera shakes. Um, so by using a remote, then the camera doesn't shake. Also, I can be ready to start light painting um, and click the shutter and also finish at the end so I don't have to return back to the camera, which wastes time uh, when essentially I've got to race against time against the ambient light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. So with these lights, I use what's called momentary mode. Uh, which is the light only illuminates when I press this button here. So essentially I can finally control when the light's on and off. So usually when light painting, it usually takes a few attempts to get something that's good. Yeah. Um, so it does require a lot of patience. Um, if you just want to get that photo first time, light painting is probably not for you. <laughs> so I'm going to start this exposure now. exposure there. Now I use long exposure noise reduction and this means that you get cleaner photos but it does mean that you then have to wait for the same length of the exposure time for the photo to appear. And what uh, type of camera do you use? Um, I use a Canon R8 um, which is well, what Canon call an entry-level full-frame camera. Mm -hmm. um, it's for entry-level it's actually pretty advanced Mm -hmm. um, I've been really impressed with the, um, like the noise levels on it. Mm -hmm. um, I've been able to take photos in ISO 8000 yep. and still been able to get a photo that's pretty usable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the depth of field is really, really good as well. So mm. in tricky situations, I've been able to rescue photos which yep. on, on my old APS-C camera um, just wouldn't have been great. Yep. All right, so we'll just have a look at that photo now. And that's the result there, which looks pretty pretty. Yep, nice. I'm pretty happy with that. It is pretty. Yeah. After that, Stephen did another one, which was just as nice. And keep your eye out for some extra behind the scenes footage as well as additional material when the Brisbane channel has memberships up and running. Coming soon. <laughs>